we're going to catch up with world-class mountain climber Luis Benitez, who suffered with severe asthma as a child. No one would have ever suspected that one day he would make it to the top of Everest. But we caught up with him at the tallest peak in Manhattan, the Empire State Building, which, believe it or not, he'd never visited before. Wow. <sighs> It's hard to believe that Luis Benitez, who has reached the summit of Everest five times and climbed the highest peaks of every continent a cumulative 32 times, has never been to the Empire State Building in New York City. But then again, Luis is still young. At age 33, he still has a few more things to accomplish. Uh, it's funny, I've never been to the Empire State Building. It was amazing. It's a different kind of jungle and it's a different kind of wilderness. It's a mountain range with uh, a whole culture living in the valleys and it's uh, it's a pretty neat thing to see from way up here how, how another part of the world works the urban jungle of New York City is unfamiliar terrain for Luis who is more at home in the bleak landscapes of Mount Aconcagua or Mount Kilimanjaro but it wasn't always like this when Luis was a child chronic asthma confined him to a life indoors my doctor at the time who was pretty big in the field of asthma said it was pretty amazing that I wasn't like that movie back in the 70s, The Boy in the Bubble. My earliest memories um, were of being a sick little kid in a hospital. All the normal things that you would normally expect to be able to do, I couldn't do. I uh, couldn't go outside for more than a couple of hours. He found the cure to childhood isolation in the pages of his father's National Geographic collection. I was used to such a controlled environment that Every page I turned just had a different planet to visit that I thought I was never going to be a part of. For me, it was like walking on the moon. For me, it was like sitting down and reading a book about going to the moon because I knew what it was like to go to the mailbox and end up having an asthma attack. Fortunately, Luis's parents embraced what, at the time, were considered to be alternative treatments for asthma. To strengthen his lungs, they encouraged him to swim indoors and to go to high altitudes. I was able to go to altitude because my father's from Ecuador, so we, we would spend summers there. It worked. Um, bit by bit, month by month, my lungs got stronger. Um, I started to slowly come off of a lot of the medications. Before long, he was stepping closer to a dream that had always seemed impossible. One of the articles that I read was about this climber that uh, had asthma, and he was one of the first Americans to climb Everest. And I figured if he could do it, I could do it. Luis's first summit was Mount Cotopaxi at an altitude of 19,350 feet in the Andes. He was 14. You have to get up really early, about midnight, to start the climb. And you can see heat lightning out over the jungle and all the other climbers with their headlamps on. It's pitch black, the wind's blowing. Sometimes clouds roll over and it begins to snow. The lightning was casting eerie shadows on all the crevasses, which are these huge cracks in the glacier. It was, it was exactly what I thought it was when I was a kid. It was like walking on the moon, and from that point forward, I was hooked. In 2001, Luis signed up for his first Everest expedition. Besides being extremely dangerous, the climb would be particularly challenging, given that Luis had offered to guide the first blind man to the summit, his friend, Eric Weyenmayer. I knew what it was like to be told your entire life things you could and couldn't do. So that's what inspired me to kind of join him on this journey. It was a life-changing expedition. You know, they say that Everest does more to you than, than just allow you to summit. The journey along the way teaches you a lot about yourself, and definitely every day was a challenge. Eric and I were lucky enough to walk arm in arm to the summit on the last day, and for me that was it. I mean, I had I had done everything that I set out. I never in a million years thought I'd be lucky enough to continue going back year after year. Luis holds the record for most consecutive summits of Mount Everest, four in the last four years. He is also very active as a high altitude guide for adventure consultants, despite the challenging physical demands it poses. What I always tell people to do if they want to kind of understand from a respiratory perspective what it's like to be on top is to take an ordinary straw that you would find at McDonald's or wherever. Um, put it in your mouth like you're going to take a sip of a drink, pinch your nose, walk up a flight of stairs while you're breathing just through the straw. And then you get how hard it is to get air on board when you're at those kinds of elevations. You see the word summit associated with you know, planting the flag, putting your hands in the air. For me, it's 
it's that to a certain extent, but it's also the very clear realization that I'm exactly where I need to be. It's more of a, of a feeling of, of peace um, and understanding the, the absolute truth of, of what my life has become.